so due to this non segregation we need that there should be no involvement of any kind of toxic things in these equipments otherwise during the incineration process those toxic elements will be released in the atmosphere which we don't want then if you look at these four categories these are the four categories that you can see here and this is the most important photo of this particular chapter you can see a slide of this particular chapter here you can see the four categories are the first category is the yellow bag second category here is the red bag third category here is the white bag and fourth category here is the blue bag here you can see under this types of bag and what type of container is used and what type of waste you can throw on these particular category bags which is enlisted here so in these categories of the waste only you can throw you cannot mix up all the waste is coming out from the biomedical facility and how to treat that that is written here from all the sections multiple times multiple questions asked in the previous examination and in the upcoming examination as well there will be question from the biomedical waste because this is a very important topic so here you can see in the yellow bag these are the non polluted plastic bags these separate collection system leading to the effluent treatment system so all the non polluted plastic bags are used to just make these container and this helps to separate the collection which is leading to any kind of effluent treatment here all the human anatomical waste this question has been asked multiple times can be uh, stored in the yellow bag animal anatomical waste then we have the soil waste expired or discarded medicines would be there chemical waste can be there microbiota and other clinical lab waste that would be also there and chemical liquid waste which needed the effluent treatment those all are under the yellow bag so these are all the things that can be put in these yellow bags how to treat the type of waste is here this can be treated by the incineration or plasma pyrolysis in the incineration there would be aerobic digestion and in the plasma pyrolysis there would be anaerobic digestion or deep burial of these things are done whatever things are under the yellow bag in red bags red bags are also made of the non polluted plastic bags or the containers and this is containing the contaminated waste that is recyclable for example tubing bottles intravenous tubes and sets catheters urine bags syringes without the needles and gloves all the things put here in the red bag and what is done for this treatment so auto micro hydroclave can be done and then sent for the recycling not to be sent to the landfill that is important here under the category of the red bag then the white bag which is made up of the translucent plastic punctured leak or tamper proof containers and waste saps including the metals those all are under this white category of the bag and what is done for the treatment for the treatment auto or dry heat sterilization followed by the shredding or um, mutilation of the encapsulations so mutilation of the encapsulations is done here so autoclave or dry heat sterilization is mainly done or maybe through the shredding the all the things are completely destroyed or decomposed then in the blue bags blue bags are generally made of the cardboard boxes with the blue colored marking and this is made for only the glass wares because plastic bags can be just harmed by the glass wares so cardboard bags are used here in which all the glass equipments are thrown or kept away so, so this is done by the treatment of the disinfection or auto micro hydroclave and then sent for the recycling purposes so this is what done for the blue container materials so i hope all the things are clear to you only the type of bag or container used is not that much important here but here the category color type of the waste and treatment disposal option is very very important so remember it carefully then what are the standards written in the biomedical waste rule of the 2016 so all the important standards i have included here in this particular part of this particular unit and you have to remember all the standards for the treatment and disposal of the biomedical waste so the very first effluent uh, or the standard provided for this biomedical waste is the operating standard so operating standard of what operating standard of the incinerators so this is the operating standard of the incinerator 
it is saying that the incinerator's combustion efficiency shall be at least 99%. What is the combustion efficiency? The combustion efficiency can be computed like this. Percent of CO2 divided by percent of CO2 plus percent of the CO. Now it means it is suppose CO2 percentage and in the downside or the denominator you have to percent CO2 plus percent CO. And now this is multiplied by the 100. So what is the meaning of the efficiency of 99%? It means the release of the carbon monoxide should be very, very less in the environment as compared to the carbon dioxide. 99% of the total part of the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide should be carbon monoxide only. So there should be no 1%, more than 1% chance of having carbon monoxide when you are operating any incinerator. That is the first operating standard that you have to remember. Next standard is saying that the temperature of the primary chamber shall be minimum of 800 degrees Celsius. You cannot burn the material below the 800 degrees Celsius. And the secondary chamber shall be, that is the more than the primary chamber, that is 1050 degrees Celsius plus minus 50 degrees Celsius. So 1000 to 1100, you can say the range of the second chamber's temperature. Then the next standard is saying that the secondary chamber gas residence time shall be at least two seconds. The gas would be stayed there for the two seconds. Then after the complete burning only that can be sent out in the environment. That is the third operating standard about the incinerators. So I hope that is clear to you. You have to remember all these standards. They can ask questions from these standards frequently in the examination. Next emission standard for the emission of the incinerators here you can see here it is having the parameter the standards are provided here limiting in the concentration and the sampling duration for the know the value of these different concentration or the parameters so very first parameter here is the pm particulate matter the limiting concentration milligram for newton meter cube is 50 30 or 1 nanometer cube of the sample volume, whichever is more, so that you have to find out. Nitrogen oxide limit is 400 nanometer per cube, 30 of online sampling or grab sample. Numbers per meter cube, it is actually not a nanometer cube, 50 number per meter cube, 30 number one per meter cube, 400 number per meter cube in milligram. So that is what here is. The SCL amount should be 50 milligram net number per meter cube, 30 milligram or one number per meter cube of the sample volume, whichever is more. Total dioxin and furon, which is released here should be 0.1 nanogram T cube per nanometer cube at 11% 11 of the O2. And the sampling duration here is the eight hours or five nanometer cube of the sample volume, whichever is more. Then here we have the Hg and its compounds. Mercury and its compounds should be limited to 0.05 milligram per nanometer cube or two hours of one nanometer cube of the sample volume, whichever is more. What you have to do here, you have to remember these values, which are very important. The question would be directly from these particular values. So you have to remember it with their parameter and that's all. If any question you are facing in the, in the examination, just tick mark your right answer within few seconds and then move ahead. This is basically just milligram per meter cube that is written as mg capital N meter cube. So here the concentration sampling rate should be 30 or one meter cube of the sample volume whichever is more. So this is like that. Either you can take the concentration 30 or maybe you can take the one meter cube of the sample volume so 30 minutes or one nanometer cube volume whichever is more 30 for online sampling or log sample so this is how this is defined you have to remember the values only then some other also uh, kind of standards are provided for the incinerators so the incinerators also have the stack and the stack height should be of these incinerators more than 30 meter so that stack which is coming out from the incinerator should be more than 30 meter 
then as from the incineration of biomedical waste shall be disposed of at common hazardous waste treatment and disposal facilities so you cannot just throw the s material coming out from the incinerators all monitored values shall be corrected to 11% oxygen on the dry basis this is what you have to do for the monitoring purpose so suppose you are monitoring the value of anything carbon dioxide carbon monoxide so that should be corrected in 11% of the oxygen we are assuming that the 11% of the oxygen present in the burning process on the dry basis and then you have to compute all the things incinerators combustion of the chamber shall be operated with such temperature retention time and turbulence as to achieve total organic carbon content in the slag and water masses less than 3% or their loss on ignition shall be less than 5% of the dry weight it means that s which is created here in the chambers of the incinerators so you have to increase the temperature to that amount and the retention time and turbulence would be that to achieve the total carbon content in the slag and the water mass which was earlier 100% should be less than 3% it means in the dry matter composition there should be no 3% more than more than the 3% carbon should be present there and in the case of their loss ignition shall be less than 5% is sometime allowed the occupier or operator of a common biomedical waste incinerator shall use combustion gas analyzer to measure the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and the oxygen amount so do you have to monitor these values the gases values co2 co2 continuously so i hope these other incinerator standards are also clear to you then what are the standards for the plasma pyrolysis the plasma pyrolysis is also called as gasification so we have already seen the standards limit for the incinerator now standards limits for the gasification is provided here so this process is done in the absence of o2 that is the first requirement that we all know during the process syn gas or producers producer gas is formed this question is asked multiple times what is syn gas or producer gas syn gas or producer gas is mixture of carbon monoxide hydrogen 85% carbon dioxide methane and nitrogen 15% almost so the co2 co ch4 is almost having a negligible amount less than the 1% you can see so this is what syn gas or producer gas is this particular syn gas is used as a fuel for making electricity which is known as the energy recovery method that we already discussed in the previous slide or previous lecture as well the temperature of the combustion chamber chamber after the plasma gasification shall be that is same 1000 to 1100 degrees celsius or 1050 plus minus 50 degrees celsius with gas residence time of at least 2 second so 2 seconds should be the amount of time the gas should be present there with a minimum 3% in the stock gas the stack height should be minimum of 30 meter in the case of pyrolysis as well that we have seen in the case of the incinerators as well and shall be attached with the necessary monitoring facilities of the pollutants that are released in the environment so this is all detail about the plasma pyrolysis or gasification so i hope this is clear to you now the next thing that we have to discuss in this particular chapter is the standard for the biomedical wastes coming out from the autoclaving process now what is the autoclaving so autoclaving is a kind of machine that you have probably seen in the labs where the uh, disinfections of in this disinfecting of the equipments is done here so inside of this particular chamber you have to put all your equipments after doing work and this you can find out in the hospitals as well where the surgery equipments are autoclaved and here this is completely packed with the a kind of ct that you can find out in cooker as well and here a good amount of steam is generated inside of this particular chamber and when the time limit is completed the ct through the ct or this particular way the gas is coming out this was a large equipment okay 
not a cooker like a small equipment and here also we disinfectant the all materials so what are the standard for the autoclaving that is provided here so to autoclave should be dedicated for the purpose of the disinfecting and treating biomedical waste when operating a gravity flow autoclave there are multiple types of autoclave here first the operating procedure of the gravity flow type autoclave is provided here the medical waste shall be subjected to a temperature of not less than 121 degree celsius and pressure of 15 pounds per square inch psi for an autoclave residence time of not less than 60 minutes so here the first standard is saying that if i want to classify it so the first standard is saying that the temperature should be more than 121 degree celsius pressure should be psi 15 psi and the time duration required here is 60 minutes this is the first type of the situation that is allowed second type of situation where temperature is more 135 degree celsius the pressure is also more 31 psi now here time requirement would be obviously less because it was earlier 60 minutes so now because pressure and temperature both are increased the new time duration you will get is 45 minutes then next another option we have that is the first option that is the second option third option is that temperature more than 149 degrees celsius pressure here is 52 psi directly and the residence time is now up to the 30 minutes only so here you can see by increasing temperature and pressure you can reduce the time easily but if suppose low temperature and low pressure is available like 121 degree 15 psi then you have to autoclave your equipment or the things for the 60 minutes as well. So this is for the gravity flow type of autoclave. So I hope this is clear to you.